One last question here, and this one might look a little bit odd. You might be thinking, well, where on earth do we go with this one? Uh, an object falls from a hovering helicopter over the ocean 100 meters above sea level. Find the velocity of the object when it hits the water. Okay, so acceleration function, right? Let's think about our acceleration function for a second. It's an object that just gets dropped. So we should know that that's going to be acceleration is equal to negative 9.8. Now, which of these is going gonna, is gonna to help us here? Um, well, what are we given? We're definitely given um, a position, 1,000 metres above the sea level. What else? Uh, if it was dropped, its initial velocity was zero. Um, and what else? Uh, if it was dropped, we could, we could assume that time was zero. So I guess we've been given all of those as initial conditions. All right, so if we've been given all of those as initial conditions, that doesn't really help us here. What is the question, where do we want to end up? Find the velocity of the object when it hits the water. So when its position is zero, find the velocity. So we want some relationship or some relation between v and x. How can we get a, vol a relationship between v and x? Um, okay, this is a good relationship between v and x. Okay, let's use that. Might be looking at this one here and saying, well, that's a relationship between v and x as well. But our acceleration function is not a function of velocity. It's a function of displacement. So we need to use this one here, not that one there. So now that we know that negative 9.8 can equal this, we can integrate both sides um, to get a relation without that derivative there. So I've integrated both sides from this step to this step. I've just left out the integration bit, but I also just forgot my little plus c here. So we better add that in. Now, how are we going to find our plus c? Well, we know the initial velocity was zero. We know the initial uh, displacement was 1,000 meters above the sea level, so we can figure out what c is relatively easy. I'm jumping through steps fast here. When x equals 1,000, v equals zero, sub it into that, and c will be 9,800. Right, we've worked hard here. We now have an equation in terms of v and x. Now, because we have an equation in terms of v and x, we can now figure out, find the velocity of the object when it hits the water. When it hits the water, its displacement will be zero. It's hit the ground. So let's just solve this when x equals zero. When I solve this, I get plus or minus 140. Now I need to interpret that. Remember, velocity is directional. This thing is falling down. So its velocity is negative, negative 140 meters per second because it's falling down. Okay, so you need to be able to reject the positive in this instance, something we don't do very often. What about part B here, where there's air resistance? Now, air resistance slows the acceleration of a thing, and it slows the acceleration by 0.2 v squared, which means that our initial acceleration function is not this. It is now A equals negative 9.8 um, plus 0.2 v squared. So this 0.2 v squared is changing the acceleration. Now I've had to make that positive because it's slowing the acceleration and the acceleration is negative. Now we have this function in terms of v, a and v. So a, f of v, we still have these initial conditions, which means that we can use this useful form for getting it in terms of a v and x. Now that we have it in that form, we can divide both sides by v to get v dv dx by itself. And then integrate so we can get some sort of value. should say when you integrate this, you need to be careful because you're going to have to flip this so you can get x by itself on this side and v by itself on that side. So there's probably a line missing between here and here, maybe two lines missing between here and here, but I trust you, you know how to integrate. We need to figure out what C is, same sort of procedure, we know what initial conditions for X and V are. So we get this as a C value, we sub the C value in, and then we use our log laws, and we get this neat little thing, X equals this. So now that we know that, we want to find um, the velocity of the object when it hits the water, so we're doing the same thing that we did over here, we let X equal zero and we solve it. In the end, velocity is equal to negative seven, because we get to reject, reject that positive value right there. 
Alright, that's the end of those questions. The very last thing I should probably tell you is why on earth these two things are true. So this first two, the first two are the same and they're not controversial. The acceleration is equal to the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. You knew that. This one here, um, we can actually just grab it from those first two because we know that acceleration is equal to the derivative of velocity with respect to time. And we know that we can do some fancy stuff with the chain rule, including writing dv dt times, and then putting whatever change we want there. And I'm going to choose to write with respect to position, with respect to position there. All right, so the change in position with respect to time, what's the change in position with respect to time? That's velocity. So we get dv dx times velocity, which is the same as that guy there, just written in a different order. So that's that one there. What about this last one? All right, this last one here, it's going to blow your socks off because you do something pretty cool. Um, we start off from what we just figured out. We know that acceleration is equal to velocity times the change in velocity with respect to position. And then we're going to do something super, super funky to this velocity. We're going to integrate the velocity. This, so this is this bit here. This is what I'm doing to it. I'm going to integrate it with respect to velocity. Uh, and let's keep this dv dx over here. And you might be saying to yourself, that's not equal. Like, the integral of v dv dv dx is not the same as this. But I'm not finished. Once I've integrated it, I'm going to find the derivative of it with respect to velocity. Okay, now what happens? Well, the integral of v is v squared times one half. And I've got this d dv hanging out the front here. And then I've got this dv dx here. What else do we see? We see dv dv here. Our chain rule again, we get d, we've still got this dx here, with respect to x, half v squared. And that is our proof for our second little formula. That's it.